Hello everyone, and this is my review for TNA Impact Wrestling on March 29th, 2016. And, you know, they, they set up this, this night basically around the whole aspect of Jeff Hardy versus Drew Galloway. Uh, so they've been, they promoted that as much as, uh, much as they could. You know, you had the babyface versus babyface role. Not always the biggest fan of it. I'll get into that match at the end. Let's start right at the beginning of the show. Uh, Matt Hardy coming out there, cutting his, prom, uh, cutting his promo basically about how he really um you know how he feels screwed over and everything like that you know on the aspect that he should be get the one be beginning the rematch and getting his match with drew galloway and everything on that aspect and waiting for uh, and that it was like unfair that he has to wait for the uh for jeff hardy um and then he gets interrupted by michael bennett this one seemed a little forced I'm not going to lie. Uh, and honestly, this entire segment, eventually with EC3 coming out, and eventually uh, it leading to the three-on-one handicap match, and then the six-man tag, everything felt forced. It didn't feel, it didn't feel uh, right in, in the aspects of, okay, why is Michael Bennett coming out before EC3? Because those two are going after each other. So he's going out and complaining at Matt Hardy. And going after him but he's in a program with EC3 uh, I, I know they could be foreshadowing something I don't know but then eventually after the um, the handicap match which well that wasn't all that good e either it was it falls under that weird situation of you know three on one I'm not a big fan of handicap matches it, it just doesn't feel normal or right even with the way they portray ec3 uh that he would be able to ha handle a three-on-one situation so uh that match not all that good uh ec3's promo before the match i thought was pretty good it was pretty good to go along with it i, I mean i'm a big fan of how all these characters have been going but this segment I just did not like and then eventually like i said it led to a six man with beer money who was like nowhere in this situation at all they they're just kind of there uh where in technical terms they don't they don't have a full-on program yet outside of probably decay but decay you don't really see much of on this show either though they do have like a little video package which not to mention just to mention the editing work they do on decay's video package it's top notch that's good stuff the way that they work the uh, Marilyn Manson song into all the stuff with uh, decay and everything uh, I like what they do here they do they, they did a really good job with decay in this and with this uh, video that they continually show uh, so we'll probably see them down the road here very soon uh, but back on to that six man like I said it just didn't it felt forced again not to mention uh, uh, with Michael Bennett teaming up with uh, Tyrus and Matt Hardy right after they've had this argument it just the entire thing did not feel right in any way uh, so I didn't necessarily like that opening segment which was a good chunk of the time too. the matches themselves well like I said I'm not a big fan of the handicap matches um, but the six man was actually a good match don't get me wrong on that but uh, everything to it kind of felt forced. Uh, so you have a so after that you have the backstage segment with Gail Kim, and Gail Kim's talking about how Maria got out of the, uh, out of their match and now Jay's number one contender. So apparently since Maria likes to just talk, she did some talking of her own and made, was able to make a number one contenders match of her own with Velvet Sky and Madison Rain. So you're back in that same boat where teammates are kind of fighting each other. So you had a quick promo from them. Basically, it's like nothing personal here, just business, everything in that sense. And this led to the uh, match with Velvet Sky and Madison Rain. Uh, all right, match, nothing crazy to write home about it, your typical face versus face type match where you know they're they're not trying to necessarily overly hurt each other or anything like that at the beginning and then eventually it turns into more of a uh, more of a uh, actual match uh, afterwards uh, which eventually led to Madison Rain winning uh, so they're going so it looks like you're gonna be doing some kind of triple threat or something or it's like two individual matches between Gable Cam and Jade, and then the winner of that has to face Madison Rain or something like that. I, I'm thinking they're going to do triple threat, uh, and then 
uh, they'll go down. Uh, they'll go somewhere else after that with the, with everything. So let's see here. Other backstage, other backstage segments uh, throughout the show, uh, because there's actually a lot of segments in the sh uh, in this show um, to go along with everything. You had uh, the Pope's uh, segment with Bobby Lashley. I thought this was great. It was a good way to get Pope away from the announcing table, which is what I think they've been trying to do over the last... Obviously, this is what they've been trying to do over the last couple weeks. And having him just directly call out Bobby Lashley is a very good way of going, which is leading to some kind of confrontation between the two of them for next uh, next week. And hopefully, uh, full-on matches down the road. I want to see these two have, uh, some, have some matches and everything. I thought this segment between Lashley... And the Pope was really, really well done. They did a good job on both of their sides of the promos. Uh, Bobby Lashley surprisingly gotten a lot better at the microphone, microphone side of everything. And uh, Pope's always been really, really good there. Uh, you had a backstage segment with Grado and Muhammad Lashir. They're setting up for their party, for their celebration and everything like that. And then gets met up with Al Snow, who decides to attack them. Um, okay, Al Snow's back in there. And now, if you, if you remember how Grado came in... It was with Al Snow. It was with the whole boot camp thing and how um, uh, Al Snow, and the storyline was like how, how Al Snow doesn't like how Grado treats the business and everything in that sense, doesn't feel like he belongs. So they're still going off of that aspect. I even like the like it how Al Snow is like, you don't belong here type uh, feeling. So obviously we're going to uh, get something going with uh, Shira, Al, um, Grado, and Al Snow. Uh, so we'll see how that one builds up. Uh, I, th I thought they did a better job towards the end of his stuff with Eli, Dr with Grado's stuff with Eli Drake than they did with the whole Odar the, than they did at the beginning with that whole Odar the Great and everything like that. I didn't, I didn't like that portion of it. But the ending I felt was pretty good in the uh, for it. But uh, we'll see where they go with this with Al Snow. Uh, obviously, it will probably lead into some kind of match. Uh, we'll see when that actually happens, though. Uh, you also had a backstage segment with uh, Jesse and Robbie. They're getting the bromance back together for good. And I, I like the aspect of Eli Drake. This is like a semi-way of turning them face, in a way. And then they later came out and had a match with uh, Eric Young and Bram. Because at the end of it, it's like, we need to, uh, Jesse's like, we need to go darker. And uh, I like the whole comedy aspect of uh, Robbie E's like, do, you mean darker tan? No, I mean just darker. Trust me. Let's go. And they and they challenged Eric Young and Bram to a match. Uh, not a bad match. They're playing off of the aspect of Bram and Eric Young having a lot of miscommunication re recently. So I feel like this is going to lead into something uh, where they those two fight. Because it, they've always played it off as like, we're not... We're just teaming up to help each other. We're not friends. We're not buddies. We're not this. We're not that. So we'll see where they go. Everything on this uh, on this side of it. So um, <clears throat> this leads into the main event of the night. Drew Galloway versus Jeff Hardy. First of all, this match was very fast-paced. Uh, very well done. The promos that you got for beforehand... Both guys showing a lot of respect to one another and everything like that. You know the typical fa uh, the typical fanfare face versus face, uh, and both of these guys play the face really really well. Um, so leading into the match, uh, you had an aspect of it being really fast paced. I, I I felt like they did a really good job of doing the fast paced style. There, there's just one thing I would really like. Uh, I think Jeff has proven this in the past that he doesn't have to necessarily go for the overly crazy bump to get over with the crowd. He's done enough of those to uh, to actually uh, you know just stay over. So that spot outside where he does the swan time, Drew's on the stairs, and he does the swan off, gets caught on the knees and falls to the ground like just. Too scary. Too too scary of a spot. Uh, otherwise, fun match. I, I really wish they didn't go with that spot. It looked like a good chance of them potentially hurting each other. It could have happened in, in that case. But otherwise, really fun, fast-paced match. Not a long match by any stretch of the imagination, though. Um, and this led to 
uh, Matt Hardy, or you know Eric Young and Matt Hardy uh, making their way out to the ring and setting up their ma- and setting up their matches for the next week, where Matt Hardy's now going to get a World Heavyweight Title shot. Uh, the promo between Matt and uh, Drew was pretty good, and uh, everything with Eric Young. Uh, obviously, Eric Young and Bram came out. And they set up a Six Sides of Steel match with him and Jeff Hardy. And all in all, uh, not bad. Uh, all, all in all to that segment, not bad. Like I said, the match was relatively short, which I don't necessarily think it needed to be uh, that short, but they went with it that way. Uh, fun, fast pace. Uh, that spot tor- that spot at the end was just uh, too scary. I, like, I'm, I'm not a big fan of those spots anymore. Uh, there was probably a time where I was, but, you know... Uh, getting older, getting wiser, understanding what these guys do a little bit more makes you not really want them to go that far with it. And, you, you know, you have a fear that, you know, Shane's going to do something on, on uh, at WrestleMania that's going to do that as well. Sorry to bring WWE into the TNA side, but, you know, it, it's like, do we really want to see that? Uh, I think there's some fans that do really want to see those spots. And nothing... Uh, and. And I mean nothing against, uh, against anybody because I, I personally got grown to a point that maybe those spots aren't necessary, especially for these guys. You know, like you need to keep your careers going. We want to see you. We want to see you in the ring. Don't don't try to end it too early. <laughs> type feel. But uh, we'll see where they go with uh, everything here. Obviously, we have the six sides of steel with Eric Young and Jeff Hardy. Uh, we could probably expect a crazy spot again uh, in that one. Uh, and you have the Matt Hardy and J- uh, the Matt Hardy and uh, Drew Galloway match for the t- for the title. You also have this uh, set up with the Pope and Bobby Lashley for next week. They, they they've got stuff set up. To make it actually a pretty good show next week. I think it could be very entertaining. So, um, overall, this week's Impact, I was not a big fan of the opening segment. Which, I'm a big fan of most of those guys. Like Michael Bennett, Matt Hardy, and, every, and EC3 and everybody in there. I'm actually big fans of. I just wasn't a big fan of how this segment worked. It, it felt clustered. It felt forced. It, it felt unnecessary. Um, so, uh, but... Overall, the rest of Impact was really good. And even though I didn't really like the segment, like the, the six-man tag with Beer Money, uh, EC3, and Matt Hardy, Tyrus, and Michael Bennett was a really good match. I thought it was enjoyable, but I just didn't necessarily care for the segment. Uh, but other than that, the rest of uh, Impact I thought was rather enjoyable. Um, and so relatively good Impact this week. And uh, you know, that's pretty much all I got for you guys this week. So that is my review for TNA Impact Wrestling. We'll see how they decide to do everything next week because they're calling it uh, Revenge next week. Uh, so everybody's like going after Revenge. So we'll see where they go with everything. I thank you guys for watching and have a great day.